Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial covering the all new Unity GUI system introduced with Unity 4.6. Again, this is in uh, a public beta, so in order to download this, please head over to the Unity website and you can download the free beta there. Awesome, so before we get started today uh, with creating some buttons that will actually do something whenever we press them. I just want to quickly uh, mention that you can of course head over to forum.brackies.com. Uh, if you have any questions or if you make something cool, please post about it there. Um, there are many people here to help and chat with you. So cool, let's dig right into today's subject. So as always, I've opened up Unity. And you can see that I again have a, a basic scene here, uh, not much to it, it's just uh, if we take a look at it here in 3D space, it's just this uh, sun that I've made uh, using a sphere and some particle systems. And then I have set up this uh, purple background here. Then I've created a very basic uh, UI, which I showed you how to make in the last video, uh, which is of course uh, available at the YouTube channel. And uh, if we dig under the canvas here, you can see that we have one change scene button. So let me just focus on that. And that's it right here. I've done nothing other than changing the color a bit and changing the text down here. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So we are ready to go ahead and make this button do something. Because right now when we hit play and hover over this and click, nothing happens. So I thought what we could do is, is make something uh, really simple, uh, which is just changing the scene whenever we press the button. So in order to do this, uh, we are going to go ahead and create a script that has a function where we will change our scene. So uh, we could put this on the button itself, or we could put it on the camera, or any other object for that matter. I'm just going to go ahead and create an empty game object by pressing Ctrl Shift N, or going up here in the menu. And I'm going to rename this to, let's say, underscore manager. Just because in most, most of my games I like to have a game object dedicated to doing stuff like changing scenes, uh, adjusting uh, settings, and uh, spot instantiating things and all that, I like to have this manager object that takes care of kind of managing the play session. So I'm just gonna uh, zero out the position just for good practice. Let's hit add component, new script, and let's make this of type C sharp. Though this will, of course, also work with uh, JavaScript. Not much conversion needed here. And let's go ahead and call this uh, change scene. Now let's double click this to open it up in Mono Develop. And it's just going to open up here. Um, whoops, mine is actually opening in Visual Studio now. Well, that's just fine. Uh, you can, of course, use Mono Develop also. Uh, by the way, the new uh, the new integration with Unity and Visual Studio is is really awesome. It's something that you should check out. I know Unity has posted a lot about it on their blog. Uh, just search for Unity VS, and uh, you should totally check it out. It's it's really cool. So uh, not much needed here. We actually can just delete the uh, start function, and then instead of the update here, we are gonna rename this to let's say. Um, change the change to scene and uh, let's give this a parameter so let's give it a string value no actually let's give it an integer so let's do integer and let's uh, call this scene to change to and uh, then in here we're simply going to do application dot load level and uh, inside of this we are going to give it the scene to change to and when we just write it like this unity is expecting an integer value uh, meaning just a number uh, which is the index of the scene we could also do a string like this and then maybe do scene one but when we set it up like this, we can call this function 
and then we can just give it an, an integer uh, and then we can put it in here. Uh, so that means that if we have multiple buttons, maybe uh, changing to different scenes, we simply uh, we can simply call the same function and then it will uh, vary the ch scene that it changes to based on the uh, argument that we give it. One thing that we will have to do in order to call this from our button is make this a public void. Like that. And that is very necessary or we are not going to be able to do this. Now let's uh, save this. Let's hit back into Unity, see if we have any errors. Looks like it's fine. Uh, now we can go ahead and find our button. Let's just check on the manager. Yeah, it's there. Now we can go ahead and find our button under the canvas. Then we can go down here and uh, under the on click, we can hit the plus sign to make something happen whenever we click it. Now we're going to reference our manager object, so simply drag it in there. And then we have a list of all of the different functions that sits on that object. And by default, we have some stuff under the game object. We have some stuff under the transform. And then we've created a script called change scene. And now we have all of the different stuff inside of the change scene. And we, of course, just want to select the change to scene. And you can see that it takes an integer. So we simply click that. And now we have the ability to just select the integer value here. So right, uh, the scene that we're on right now is going to be called scene one. And that's just going to have an index of zero. What we want to change to is scene two. And we're going to give that an index of one. So we're going to set this to one. Now this should theoretically work. But let's say we want to set this up with uh, a string value instead. Well, then we simply head into our script. Instead of an int, we type in string here. And then we simply put this scene to change to again. Now we save. And we're going to wait for Unity to update. Then we're going to go under here. We're going to select change scene, change to scene, and then we can give it a string instead. And we're simply going to call this scene two. So now it doesn't matter what index it actually has. Now, remember, whenever we want to change bet between scenes, we need to add them to our uh, build. So let's go under build settings or press Control shift b Let's hit add current to add scene one. And let's also drag in scene two. Now you can also see the indexes to the right. And you can change the index by simply dragging. Cool, so now when we hit play, and click the change scene button, you can see that we changed scene to scene two. Hooray, we finally made it. And that's the basics of adding scriptable events or, or adding uh, clickable events to buttons. So this technique can also be applied to sliders. Um, so uh, you can change values depending on a slider value. Uh, so if that's something you want to see or anything else in general, please leave it as a comment and I'll make sure to cover it. Also, I'm very sorry that I've been away for so long, but I've been working on some really cool projects that I will hopefully soon be able to show you. So as always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions about today's video, head over to forum.brackies.com and uh, simply create a thread. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.